I'm out here, uh, here at the um, at the port waiting to get in. These trucks passing by. They have eight o'clock appointment. I got nine o'clock appointment. I was trying to get eight, eight o'clock appointment because that's the time that open, but that uh, that time slot was full. So the next thing they had available was on um, nine o'clock. I come out early regardless. So what I did this morning, I went and pick up this um container I have right now. I got a twenty foot. I'm gonna drop it off. Then I'm gonna pick up a another 20 foot take it back to the customer and this i dropped this at the customer wednesday i think it was wednesday i dropped this no thursday thursday yeah i dropped this at the customer thursday they unloaded yesterday about five o'clock yesterday evening they tell me it was empty i could come and pick it up but i just um it was too late anyhow so i just wait till this morning to pick it up but i pick it up this morning and now i'm here getting ready to go drop it off Get ready to go drop it off, but I could have keep it till Monday because they asked me if I want to drop it. They asked me if I want to drop it today or Monday, and uh, bring them another one because I have another one for them. So I told them I'll come out to the end do it. Okay, they're working today, so I figure I'll come out to the end do it. That way they have it. But that's how it is, man. Some, some customers, they request, they request for you to do something on a day that no, you normally off. I normally off on the weekends. I hardly work on the weekends. But I decide to come out here and do it. That way, it worked for me and it worked for them. They want it today, just as bad as I'm trying to get rid of it today. That way, Monday, I'm not back on this. Monday I have something else going on. This already done and good to go. So I'm here waiting to go in the port. I'm gonna get up there about um 8.30. By 8.30 I'm gonna go in. I'll try to get some footage of this transaction. I'm gonna drop this 20 off and I'm gonna pick up another 20. And this one, this is a heavy load. I think it's about 53,000 pounds that they put in this 20 foot. So when they, I slide this one in, our, in um, order to avoid hauling it on a triaxle. I slide it that way it ride a lot better than when it's um closed up so I slide it like this and this customer they unload it like this so when I get there I don't have to slide it back I just unload I just drop it like this and they'll unload it just like that which is good that's good for me when I get there I don't have to slide it because sometimes when it's heavy it's hard to slide you gotta fight with it. I have a tool that you could use to pull the handle out. Cause that's what it is when it's heavy. The handle is hard to pull it out to get the pins to go in. So I have a tool. One of these days I'm gonna uh, make a video showing how it work. That way, if you wanna buy one, I'll drop a link in that video. When I put that video up, I'll put a link in the description. If you want to buy one to see how it works. I'm going to show you this truck coming down here. It's an international. I think it's an international. I just got a good look on it. 
But it's some nice trucks that run the port, man. Sometimes you hear people say the trucks that run the port are raggedy. That's just the guys who choose to have their trucks looking like that. You don't, you don't gotta choose to have your trucks looking like that. There's a lot of nice trucks that run the port. That's the international right there. I think it's a 9400 or a 9900. And then you got that um that classic. It's a lot of classic that run the port. It's a lot of um what you call it there? Um W9s that run the port. It's a lot of nice looking um Columbia's and Centuries that run the port. You could have a nice truck and decide to come around the port with it, or you could come around the port, buy a truck, um, fix it up, keep it maintained while running the port. Uh, you clean your truck up every day, clean your truck up every weekend, whenever you decide to clean it up, keep your truck up. Okay, you can make money running the port to keep your truck up. Some people just choose not to. Everybody have different things that they um that they focus on. Some guys don't focus on maintaining their truck, so that's not that's not their thing. Their thing is not keeping the truck up. Their thing is not soon as something break on the truck, they replace it or they fix it. That's not them. And I understand that's not that's not how everybody is. So when I see a raggedy truck running the port, I don't look on it like all oh, poor trucks are raggedy because I know that's not true. It's just that person, how they maintain the truck. Um, they're not putting 100% into it. Some people can't, I understand that because some people not making the money to do it. And if you somewhere where you're not making the money to do it, you gotta look into yourself. Is it you or is it the customer? Or is it the um, the carrier you with? Or if you're out on your own, you gotta look on it like, is it the customers that you're dealing with not paying a lot? Or is it you limiting yourself just working with the customers that's not paying? So at the end of the day, you gotta look on you, okay? It all comes back to you. This money out here in um, pulling containers. Look around on everybody else's truck and you decide. Talk to some of them other drivers, see what they do. doing. Everybody not gonna tell you everything straight up. But once you bring a, once you build a trust with them, they'll start telling you stuff. That's what you gotta do. People reach out to me sometimes for information and I'm limited on what I'll give them at first but as I get to know the person as I trust the person I'll give them more and more information a lot of good information I'll give them customers I'll, if I find out about any load I'll send them the information the contact information or whatever information they need to haul their load I'll send it to them if they're not qualified to do it or they're not approved to do it also give them information on how to get qualified or how to get approved but a lot of this stuff i don't give it to you on the first conversation because i don't know the type of person you are and i'm not going to put my reputation on the line passing on certain information to you and you get into the customer and don't do what you're supposed to do because then it look bad on me Whenever I send somebody else in there, they might think you're coming in there to do the same thing. They might think somebody else gonna come in there not um, covering the load, not picking up on time, not delivering on time because you didn't do what you were supposed to do when I recommend you to them. So that's why I don't give out certain information on the first conversation. But if I talk to you enough and I see that you are um, reliable, you're trustworthy, I'll give you the information. Check out this truck right here. It's a nice Peterbilt right there.
I didn't even get a good shot of it. So I'm here with it, waiting for them. Um, I'm trying to get somebody on the phone to fix the box. I put the box down on the chassis. I'm going to show it to you in a little bit. I put the box down on the chassis and the front, the box is just sitting on top of the pins. take it over to the section where they fix it. But the way it's sitting. So you know I was calling but they wouldn't pick up the phone. So as soon as I call you know which one it was.